Okay, welcome to June Gem 12. This is going to be about uh, querying lists because very rarely are you going to build uh, a workflow that just happens to have all the data inside it. You probably have to get some data from another list and it could be a list on the current site, could be a list somewhere else, uh, another site, another site collection, another farm, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, what would you need to do to go about querying that particular data so that you can you know, parse it go through maybe do some calculations etc so here's a index workflow designer it's just a fresh brand new workflow and the action i want to point you to is one called query list now let's drag this on and have a look at what it looks like now first of all i'm going to go through some of the bits here so you get an idea of what these are you have your query, your editor mode, which is the query builder or camel editor. Now, for those who, uh, who are probably just starting off with Nintex workflow, I think the easiest thing to do is use the query builder. Notice it gives you all the lists that you have in your site. And I can say, let's query that particular list. As soon as you select this list or document library, you have all the fields that are available in that library. Or a list so you'll be able to actually pick what you want to get out now the one thing i need to point out when it comes to this once you selected that list is you might select one click on add you can then click on something else and keep getting other fields get as many fields as you want now the recursive little checkbox here just tells the query list action whether you want to query down through any subfolders that you have in that library so you may want that, you may not, it's completely up to you. The filter option lets you filter on particular data. So if you have, uh, maybe your workflow runs on a particular item that was created, you get some data out of that item, maybe a particular item property, and now you want to go and query a list to say, give me all the data I need based on this condition. This is what this filtering is. So you can see the default is select all list items, but you also have the ability to do uh, select uh, items only when the following is true, right? You might say, I want everything where you know, the name contains the letter A, something like that. Now, there's other filters you can add. So you can do and, or, and, and all that sort of stuff. So you can make this as complex as you want to filter down to the exact piece of data that you actually need. Now, the other thing is the sorting. Sorting is actually pretty cool. I don't really see a ton of people using this, but you know what? It actually s saves you a bunch of time from having to sort the data out later. So you can say, if I'm going to get the created by and name field, maybe I want to say, uh, actually, you know what? Let's actually get rid of the created by. Let's actually get, uh, I don't know, let's say type. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to filter on created. Right? and we want to do it in ascending order. Now what that means is it's going to go through and sort all the items that we get back based on this particular filter, and then it's going to sort them by the created date. So all your items are going to be in order from oldest to newest. Uh, the other really interesting thing is, is when you start adding other sort rules. Right, so then you get, you get some really interesting combinations of, I want to sort it in order of date, and I want to sort it in the order of, of name. So you end up having like these little groupings, which is kind of interesting. This is something to play around with because I think it's not uh, it's not obvious to, to a bunch of people. So definitely play around with this. Maybe create yourself a list with a bunch of columns, bunch of data in there, and actually try this out because you'll find some really interesting results when you start querying that data. But like I said, this really helps in having you uh, or stopping you from having to build a bunch of logic, just go through and sort your uh, results. Okay. Now, the other thing to point out is what you're going to store the data in. Now, if you decide to store the data in a text variable, right, because if I go up here and create a couple of variables, I'll just do text data, and I'll do another one called collection of data. Right, done, single line of text and collection. If I come down here, notice I get the option to do both. So think about this when you're actually storing the data. If you are expecting multiple records back, 
store in a collection because if you store it in text data you'll only get the first one right just be aware of that i found uh recently someone was trying to query a particular list get a bunch of email addresses back but that because they were storing it in a text data variable when they were trying to assign tasks or send notifications it would only send it to one person because it only had one piece of data in there so make sure you use a, a collection variable to store that sort of data in there okay now this xml encode inserted tokens um, i don't think really think you need to bother too much with this basically what that does is if you are doing any sort of uh, filtering on you know, using variables, so for example, I want to check whether a name contains some particular variable that you have or something like that. If you have any special characters, uh, it will actually encode those. So generally I just leave that on and I don't really touch it. Uh, and I'll tell you why that is in a moment. Uh, include HTML, HTML formatting in which text columns, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and specify an item limit. So if you want to say, I want to make sure I get uh, you know, only 10 items, you, know, you can specify that limit right there. Okay, now this is the query builder, right? Notice how it's fairly sort of straightforward. Uh, you don't need to know too much about the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, it kind of helps you kind of build out this query. But notice the run now action, you can definitely click on this and actually test it out. And it will uh, let you test this out without having to publish your workflow and, and run it. Now, for those who are a little bit more experienced in regards to SharePoint, it may get to the point of how do I configure this a little bit more? I want to go into the uh, into the depths of this and actually look at what the query was that was created. So let's see what we have here. We have, let's go created by, so created and document ID. That's what we're going to sort on. For this, we're going to also do title is... Uh, let's see, where's the, let's say is, is not null, okay, and we also want to make sure that title begins with ABC. All right, so we've got a bunch of stuff here. Now, to see what's happening behind the scenes and what we've actually built, behind the scenes it's actually building something called a camel query which is basically a bunch of xml that gets sent to sharepoint to query it you can actually see what this is by checking this camel editor mode and notice we have the list id we have the fields we want to get back which is actually the um the fields that we have down here they got renamed because you went to camel editor mode you can see the where which is the filter part so you can see we have an and an or we have another, uh, let's see, we also have the, the begins. So you can see how we kind of built the sort of functionality out uh, for you. You don't have to worry about building this camel query. And then we also have the sorting part, which is you know, order by, created by, and uh, some doc ID that I put in there as well. Now, why we've actually exposed this particular piece of functionality is you can go in here and tweak this a little bit. If you're looking at uh, querying outside this particular site and going to another site or another site collection, you actually have the ability to tweak this uh, this XML that you've built here uh, with something called a scope uh, a scope token. Now I won't go into the details of that. Something that you guys can look into if you need to. But if you do need to query cross site, you can definitely do that. Also in Camel Editor mode, you can probably ignore that scope thing and actually change it from current site to alternative site and then you can actually put in the URL. Now you can make this really smart by actually f figuring out what the ID is and replacing the list ID here as well. So just a few little things to, this is for the more sort of intermediate to advanced users. You know, if you want to start building this sort of type of functionality out, uh, you can definitely do that and you can tweak this. There's a lot of information on the camel query structure on the MSDN site, so feel free to look into that okay so let's actually just save this and we won't bother running this but you got a good idea of of how to query a particular list now for the really advanced user if you want to go and query across maybe a different farm you actually have an action called a core web service action and if you need to 
you can look at calling the SharePoint out of the box lists.asmx web service. Now, it's a little bit more complex because you, know, you have to build everything out yourself, but let's actually give it a quick go here. We'll do a call web service action. And I'm going to just pause this, do some configuration, and hopefully show you how this works really easily. Okay, so this is, uh, here's the list of ASMX web service. I've got my credentials in here. I clicked on refresh, which then showed me all the web methods. Uh, I picked get list items, but notice how we've got all these bits. And if you look at view name, query, view fields, row limit, query options, these are all very similar to what you would see in the actual uh, query list action. So what I tend to do is actually build something out, querying a, a local list on the current site. And then when I want to query some, some other lists on some other, uh, some other site list, some other web app, uh, I could also actually look at that XML and actually put this in here. So it's just something to think about for the more advanced uh, users. I may go into the, into the core web service action a little bit later down the road. Okay, I hope this is helpful for people. Right, definitely look into using this query list action, pulling out the data. Make sure that you look at uh, the different filtering that you ha you can do, the different sorting. I definitely recommend playing around with this uh, and storing your data in collection variables rather than just flat text or number variables if you expect to get multiple values back. Okay, hope this is helpful and look forward to the next June Gem.